Zoning appeals at 7.01 uh, p.m. on April 17, 2018. This is a scheduled meeting of the City of Ferndale's Board of Zoning Appeals. As stated in Section 24.425 of our Code of Ordinances, the Board of Zoning Appeals is a body of limited powers. Uh, those powers are to interpret the zoning ordinance and map when a question arises as to their meaning or intent, to hear and decide appeals relating to orders or decisions made by officials or bodies charged with enforcement of the zoning ordinance and to make determinations on requests for variances. The Board of Zoning Appeals does not have the power or authority to amend the zoning ordinance, to disregard its provisions, or to rezone parcels of land. Um, can we have a roll call? Yes. Colson? DC? Here. Pollica? Here. Moore? Here. Palmer? Here. Porter? Shapiro? Here. Steideman? Here. Williamson. Here. We have a couple of different board members that have indicated ahead of time that they are not going to be present for tonight. Uh, that is uh, uh, board member Colson, board member Pollica, and uh, Porter. Porter is, uh, as an alternate, is not required to be here with us uh, tonight. Uh, they would like to make a motion to excuse our absent members. I'll make a motion to excuse our absent members. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, taking a look at the agenda, uh, does anyone have any uh, additional items or questions uh, with respect to our agenda for tonight? Seeing none, I'll look for a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda, we have approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes from the last meeting? I'll wait a minute for you to pull those up because they're pretty short. And I think I read them before. I just want to make sure. Is that your phone? No, it's my <laughs> nose is a stranger coming in. Okay. I'm not here to be back. Call to the window. favor say aye. aye aye any opposed seeing none the motion carries and we'll move on to our uh, public hearing for this evening which is a hearing on an accessory building side yard variance for 510 East Troy Street uh, if we could start out by having staff uh, present the proposal and uh, walk us through the staff's thoughts on this sure good evening um, as as the chair Williamson stated, 
Um, there is one um, variance application this evening. Um, the dimensional variance request is for one and a half feet um, from the required three foot side yard setback um, for an accessory structure. Um, if you saw the public notice, there was a previous request for, or a second variance request originally um, from the rear setback requirements, but that uh, request has since then rescinded and the applicant has found a way to um, work within those parameters. He really only needed a matter of inches in that, in that instance. So, um, the, and for those that may not be familiar, um, the accessory buildings and structures ordinance was updated recently. Um, previously, well, still to this date, the minimum is five feet from a side or from a adjacent lot line or easement. Um, but three foot is allowed if there is fire rated construction um, present, which the applicant has proposed as part of um, his garage plans. Um, his conversations have been with myself and the building official um, on um, restoration after a, a storm for this accessory building. Um, and due to the existing location, the foundations, um, it was deemed that his plans wouldn't wouldn't be permitted under the existing ordinance and needed to pursue a variance. So um, the applicant is here this evening. Um, I did include in the packet the survey. Just hopefully you saw that that showed where exactly the 1.5 feet would be on that front um, right side corner. Um, the um, situation is a little bit unique in that. Um, the way that the driveway is um, oriented. Um, their shared driveways are not certainly not unique to Ferndale, um, but this one is more tight than some of the others I've seen, but um, that is for the, the board to discuss. Um, I didn't receive any um, calls or emails or letters or visits to the front counter from anyone opposed or um, in support, but um, it doesn't look like anyone else may be showing up. But. Um, I included both um, motions, uh, an approval and denial motion in your packet just for consideration. Um, but the applicant's here to discuss his uh, application and let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you, Justin. Um, before we do a quick opening and closing of a public hearing, uh, uh, would the applicant like to say anything uh, uh, about, the, uh, about the request? Sure, if you could just go up to the podium, just state your name, uh, say where your address is, and tell us what you think we should know. All right. Uh, good evening. My name is Eric Kramer. This is my wife, Brittany. How are you doing? Uh, residents, uh, owners at 510 East Troy Street. Um, we're here tonight to, uh, to review this variance request uh, to rebuild the structure of our garage that was damaged in a storm in October. Um, really, I think the few points I guess I'd like to cover. Um, the existing garage structure is on an angle in our lot, so the back corner is within three feet. The front corner is about a foot and a half closer to the lot line. Um, but that lo the, uh, the angle of that structure allows easy access to get into both stalls. It's a two-car garage. So actually to maneuver a vehicle from the driveway to the far side of the garage requires a pretty tight turn. and got to go real slow not to hit either the house or the to, to get into position properly. So I believe that's why the structure was oriented the way it was, and I'd like to maintain that to um, to allow ease of access, safety, maneuverability on the lot uh, with the shared driveway and the dimensions of our property. Um, obviously, to support um, the safety of our neighbors as well, we'd like to propose fire rated materials on the side that we're requesting the variance on. Um, we think that makes sense for the neighborhood and for the our neighbors around us. And the, the proposed design is exactly what was there before, um, obviously with the addition of fire weighted walls and, um, and it's, side, it's yeah. the similar structures to others along Troy Street. I know shared driveways are fairly typical and we also have properties adjacent to ours with similar structures within the sub same build to um, line that we're sort of dealing with now. So, I mean, contextually, massing, scale, all of it, I, I think will be appropriate to the neighborhood. Um, our neighbor is, so it's a, it, the tree is, um, sort of splits our two property lines. And so the evening that it happened, you know, he obviously feels terrible. The, you know, the tree was 
um, aging and, and that sort of thing and damaged our home and our belongings and things. And um, he's very much in support of, of this. Unfortunately, he's been hospitalized for the past month and um, unable to join us today. Thank you. Uh, seeing that there's no one else here in the audience, I'm just going to open and close the public hearing here quickly, but you can just stay there because I'm sure that we'll have some yeah, questions sure. among the board members to ask you. Uh, we'll open the public hearing at 7.11 p.m. Uh, for anyone in the audience who would like to address the board on this matter, uh, seeing no one in the audience other than staff and the applicants, uh, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing also at 7.11 p.m. And uh, now that we have the public hearing out of the way, let's have a, a discussion and questions from uh, board members as to the proposal. Through the chair, you said a tree fell on it? Yeah. Just a branch, but it could have yeah, been the size of the tree. It was it's a very large. large. So I just want to clarify, just because I, I hear rebuild, and it's not a repair, it's a, like a complete scrap rebuild from so, so scratch. So the way we read the code, it requires um, Three, a minimum of three walls to be standing in order for it to be considered a, a remodel as opposed to a rebuild. Unfortunately, there was enough damage, and our cars were inside of the garage, obviously, when, when the branch fell. And so in order to remove the cars without causing further damage, um, there needed to be some selective demo work. Um, and so unfortunately, we just don't have the, the minimum walls to be considered a rehab as opposed to a complete rebuild. Um, believe you me, that would have been our preference as well. And we talked to some contractors about how some of the walls could have been stabilized, but unfortunately, you know, we had we had valuables in there that we needed to limit further damage. Are you proposing to use the, uh, um, the existing foundation in the exact uh, same capacity and orientation that it is currently on the property? So, so the footings remain on the site. Yes, that is correct. The footings remain on the site. Um, we don't have a lot of um, previous knowledge about what was there, how the build, the garage was constructed previously. Um, so we believe that it meets code. We have no reason to believe that beyond just the build two lines, it, it otherwise meets code. But you're not planning on uh, tearing out any concrete, pouring any new concrete. We would like no. to not do that. That's why, you know, hopefully we're. That's why we're coming to you is because our preference would be not to um, go that route. Right. Okay. Through the chair, Justin. Um, did you go out to the site? And the reason I ask is because old garages don't have the same footings that new garages are required to have, and that's why I'm asking. Right. Um, I did not go out to the site, but the building official did. Um, it appeared that the footings would meet today's standards for okay. frost-free and uh, rod rodents and the, that sort of thing. No, I was just making sure. You know. I have a shared driveway also, although we only have a garage on the side that's like way over, so it doesn't matter. But yeah. <coughs> well, be sure to trim your trees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky. There are no trees. No trees. Zero. Yeah. Zero, which is really weird in Ferndale, right? Yeah. Yeah, zero trees. Lucky. No, I think everybody should trim their trees. Lesson After learned. After this last storm, of course. But. As new homeowners, lesson learned. Um, through the chair, I'd like to uh, ask the applicant to reiterate the practical difficulty that they feel exists in building the garage um, to code uh, with respect to the property. I understand the foundation por portion of it, so just speaking more about the property. Um, it's not indicated real clearly on the survey that we had done, um, but access to get in and out of the structure and have good use of the garage, having that angle of, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you, if you saw the property, maneuvering a vehicle, a modern sized vehicle in and out of the property is, is pretty tight between cutting that corner and getting lined up straight down the, the uh, driveway. There is a tree right on the front corner of that garage, so if you're trying to like do a three point turn, it's, it's just a tight area to maneuver around. So the concern is, is that we wouldn't be able to, though the lot allows for us to move the garage over and be within the, the requ required build two lines, it would 
wouldn't allow access to that far west stall. stall. I, I'm bad with directions, but I believe it would be the western yeah. stall, um, which would obviously limit the use of, of the two car garage to a single car garage. Um, so that's, as far as the use goes, that's our, our biggest concern, um, which would then put additional cars in the street. And I know, I know that's you know, just a general, not in the interest of anyone really. Justin, do you have any um, um, insight onto whether the garage could be considered a residential structure? I did um, re review that with the city attorney. That was my initial inkling, and um, he had said that that doesn't, accessory buildings won't fall under that. Um, I forget the section, but in the non conforming structures section. Uh, but that was my initial thought is to pursue that um, but he informed me that that wouldn't be permitted in this instance it would only be for residential structures where um, you would live not store store vehicles or storage of anything really but so they'd have to have like at least a perfunctory kitchen and bathroom or something like right. that classified as a residential structure right okay For the applicants, would you be um, um, reusing uh, uh, the same electrical connections uh, for the new structure? Yeah, there's a, I don't know what you call it, a feed that's been underground, it's up, it's still uh, functional. We'd like to utilize that same uh, conduit and setup. Okay, would you be using the same uh, anchor bolts that are in the existing foundation to attach the walls of the new structure? believe they're all intact it would be my assumption yeah yes okay is there anything from the existing walls that would be preserved uh, or, so or do the we, walls have to be completely replaced we do have one wall that remains um, it's the wall closest to the tree so it survived the crash so okay. to speak um, you know I would imagine that some repair would need to be done to that wall in order to, to make it structurally sound um, and obviously improve the, the fire rating and you know any insulation, whatever needs to be done. But um, you know, if necessary, that wall very much could be preserved. Yeah, and really the, the reason the other walls were removed was to get access to the vehicles and get our possessions out uh, quickly. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Palmer, having been the longest um, serving member of this board, uh, what you recollect about uh, uh, how the board has treated similar situations that have come up in your tenure as a board member? Well, the fire rated material has come up quite often in, in most recent. Um, the, um, uh, the shared driveway has not come up. And the shared driveway and the angle to which you have to use your yard or your access is difficult and that's where I we haven't had anything that was a shared driveway so I can't really come to that I'm trying to relate to whatever we've done in the past and it's only the fire retardant situation where something has to be done closest to um, a lot line now this lot line though mm -hmm. is a fence uh, it's no, not no. close to the house the neighbor's house is my point mm -hmm. correct how far from the neighbor's house would you estimate this garage the way it exists? From the neighbor's house? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out at you. Is it 10 feet or is it 20 feet? I would say it's closer 20, to 20 feet. Yeah, it's Definitely. Closer to 20. Right. So which, it's the reason 20. that we have our codes of being close to other property is for fire. Sure. So with that being said, we have enough room for a fire truck, fire hose, fire whatever to get in there. I think that it that that's something we have to consider too. So maneuverability, you're saying, is not going to be as much of an issue in a situation like this, especially with the shared driveway. Yeah, because you still have access. Is what I'm thinking. And as long as there's that distance, I think that makes a difference. It's a minimum of 10 feet from any structure that another structure can be built. So as far as that goes, there's plenty of room. So that I just wondered because I was.
was thinking that that's the, the fence. It's not near the house or, or the other garage, right? Yeah. There's not another garage. The neighbor no. does not have a exactly. structure there. So. Oh, okay. So there's yours so is the garage, and then there's no garage on the other side. Right. right. There's no other. So there's structure. no real okay structure close enough to it that would make it a fire hazard or um, impeding light or. Um, course not traffic but you know I mean I think it makes it easier for the fire part of it and using fire fire retardant material makes a huge difference we didn't do that in the past we just said we can't okay so um, and that was on a an addition that we did that on so I would say it was similar well, you raise a good point yeah there is not a without another structure within Do you agree on that situation? I think that that that's a. I think that's pretty large. Bless you. Yeah, I'd actually like to make a motion, but I have a couple questions first. Um, I'm actually, so open-handedly, I'm, I'm for providing to mitigate the hardship here, right? But we're only allowed to grant up to the minimum variance allowed to alleviate the hardship. And the way it's written in the proposal, it's basically granting um, pretty much up to one and a half feet, which then you could just build the whole thing right up to one and a half feet. So I'd like to either reword it to be the actual, like, I don't know if you just say it has to be re I don't know if it's possible to make the motion in a way that you just say rebuild to the exact same location or if we have to actually say you know there's exactly 6.49 square feet that's allowed over the variance something like that but so I'm I'm very comfortable granting as this is a act of God situation and personally I'm not putting words in the board's mouth but personally this is what I feel we're here for right to alleviate hardships and that and that's one of the main circumstances so I don't know if anyone has any opinion on that, how they think we should best reword it, but I would like to make a motion approving this, but with different verbiage. I think what it would have to be is a certain, I think it's known, am I correct, Justin, of what corner of the garage is going to be? I mean, if it's in the same place is what I'm saying. Do we have to be that distinctive of of what variance we're doing for what portion of the garage? Um, there just does, it, it doesn't have to say a specific portion, but it does have to be a number of feet. So if you wanted to provide. So do you have a guesstimate on what? I think 1.5 1, 1. based on what the building official looked at was, was accurate. So no, 1.5 is what they need, but for right. what length? Um, that's what I think you're getting at, right, Mike? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to. So, so yeah. the reason yeah. through right, the yeah. through the chair, yeah. the reason why we need to be specific is because if we grant a variance to you, someone else will come in and be like, "Well, I want one and a half feet." So we just need to be careful about the way we word it. Yeah. Um, so it, it appears to me it's a small portion, is what I'm going to say. Correct. Compared to the, is the garage 10 feet deep, 20 feet deep? What What do you? It's 22 feet deep, 20 so feet wide. My guess is no more than five feet. So. I mean, just by looking at it. Would we just motion to allow the, what is that, northeast corner, the variance, but the southeast corner has to remain Correct. at the 3.4 foot, 3.4 foot original. I think that's what we original. have to do to cover our butts, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, perhaps add a condition that uh, uh, it's to be built on the existing foundation. Yes. Yes. Uh, that okay. Helps too. Yep. But yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah. Noting that it's, uh, that the variance applies only to the, uh, Northwest or the northeast corner mm -hmm. of the structure, with the understanding that the southeast corner will remain uh, within compliance to the existing setback requirement. Well, more than that, but, but at least like 15 at least feet of the garage would. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I think only five, up to five feet. Is that you said 22 or 20? I'm sorry. Uh, 22. Deep, 22 deep. Yeah, I'm guessing no more than five feet at that point would be a one and a half foot. Am I close, Justin? Yeah. yeah. I think you could probably add to finding four um, where it describes the, if required to meet the minimum three foot side yard ordinance requirements, you could add at the northeast corner. I think that would be a finding of fact that would 
cover off, there would be no wiggle room or gray area. Right. So maybe you don't have to do the footage, Michael, is what I was going to say. Okay. Just trying to figure out how to word this. So I guess it'd be, I motion that the Board of Zoning Appeals approve the dimensional variance applicant to allow a variance of 1.5 feet for the northeast corner remaining on the original foundation from the required minimum side yard setback of three feet at 510 East Troy Street, Sidwell number 2425342228-002 after a public hearing was held, was set and published for the state in place and the motion is accompanied by the following findings that the section 24-183, parentheses one, parentheses F, uh, requires a minimum side yard setback of three feet from the property line or easement uh, if construction is fire re resistant rated according to the current Michigan residential code. And the remaining south east corner will remain at the 3.5 foot, 3.4 foot distance on the original foundations. Are you thinking of adding a funded am uh, amendment with respect to the fire resistant construction? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I saw you turn. It's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's required in the seven years. Thank you, Chair. Could you repeat that last portion? Uh, and that the southeast corner remain 3.4 feet on the original foundation. Are also on the original foundation. Discussion on the uh, the motion. Board Member Steadman, would you like to include uh, the remaining findings as set forth in the packet uh, in your motion? Do we need all seven? I'm sorry, I just picked the one that Justin. I believe we do, don't we? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And I would okay. like to amend my motion to include. <laughs> you can just say what's in the. To include findings three through seven as set forth in the packet, you can. Yeah, to include, also way. to include findings three through seven as set forth in the packet. And are you still willing to support that? Yes, I will support Vice that. Vice Chair? Yes. Further discussion? Seeing none, uh, let's take a roll call vote. Okay. Gotta see who's here. DZ? Yes. Uh, Palmer? Yes. Moore? Yes. And, oh, whoops, wrong person. Uh, Shapiro? Yes. Steadman? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Uh, the motion carries. Uh, congratulations. You Thank, you. Thank you very much. And thanks for coming. Yeah, that's an unfortunate situation. Yeah. I live Thank on you. Saratoga, and uh, just uh, coming back uh, uh, this past weekend after the ice storm, I saw several large branches fall from a tree on Troy Street as wow. I was looking out my front window. Yeah. It wouldn't have been over by years, but it would have been the next block over. Yeah, it's, one over yeah. it's, a, it's a big maple tree. The one in our property is it's huge. It's uh, unfortunate. We got it trimmed up, but... A lot of old trees in front of Yeah, right. The cars were salvageable, so. Oh, right. I thanked myself for trimming my trees in November. Yeah. Because, <laughs> no, seriously, when those limbs were coming down all along our street, I'm thinking to myself, I'm glad because my trees are way too close to my house. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Anything on your 
property you can trim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck with your construction. All right, uh, any uh, communications and announcements? Just tonight? briefly, um, the Planning Commission tomorrow night will be taking up um, some potential ordinance amendments um, related to projections, front porches, um, and fence height. Uh, you might recall a few months ago there was a fence discussion that we had, um, and so this would not fall under that because it is uh, because that's a commercial business, but we did also recently update a fence or a screening wall for parking that would affect that um, business. So that business would be able to build um, the, up to, I think it was, they were seeking uh, the current, or, or the ordinance was 36 inches and now they could have, um, I believe, six feet. Um, so I think they'll be, they'll be happy with that. But the, tomorrow night, the um, Planning Commission is looking at residential fences because there is, Actually, we did review this one as well recently. Um, the front yard, um, fences can't extend to the front yard, obviously, but across the front uh, property line, um, you can't have a four-foot fence, and that would be bumped up to six feet, which kind of m matches what um, other communities have. Um, not to the sidewalk. To not the, to the sidewalk. To the end of the house. To the end of the house. And Thank you. You said the property yes. line, you scared me. Okay. I meant, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just I meant, wanted to make sure I'm yes. thinking six foot fence around these no. houses. No, about wall compounds. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we don't want compounds or fortresses here. But yes, built to the building line. <laughs> okay. Um, and so um, we'll see what the Planning Commission reviews that as. But um, that seems to be one that I've, I've heard a few times. Um, and actually, regarding fences, um, staff is proposing this in the next fee schedule update a fence application just because um, there's been so many fences that have been not conforming and, and building even past the front building line and things like that that um, we'd really like to stop seeing and having to tell people they need to rip those out. So, uh, But if you take a look at the Planning Commission agenda, there's a few other um, ordinance amendments that will be reviewed that um, I don't know that they've been to the BZA in the past, but um, they would you haven't be. haven't had any fences. Yeah. But um, some of the other ones um, probably would lessen a few of the requests we received um, going forward. Um, I did read through that packet, and I and I particularly appreciated all the clarification that was added um, around front porches and things like that. I think it's going to be really helpful for people um, thinking about doing that. Can you just go back a minute and reiterate what you had said about the commercial? Sure, yes. Um, so as part of some amendments that the uh, Planning Commission City Council reviewed over the past couple months, um, for commercial businesses we require um, parking to be screened. And I think the minimum previously was 36 inches. Now that's being bumped up a bit um, in talking with some of the fence companies and things like that. Um, the height that we were acquiring was sort of a custom fence that many people would have to pursue. Um, and so I think between the Planning Commission and City Council, they saw that as, you know, this only will help screen um, more headlight spray and things like that and not really be um, an imposing fortress light type of look. Um, well, your typical fence is four foot. Right. 36 inches is not four foot. Right. It's three yes. foot. And yes. so it would be custom made, yes. Right. Yeah. So. Justin, is there a reason why uh, um, when there are proposed changes to the zoning ordinance. Those changes are reviewed by Planning Commission, but they're not reviewed by the Zoning Board. Um, I th you know, I'd have to get some history on that, but... Um, We've never ever done that. They were separate entities. Yeah, I think... I mean, if anything, the Planning Commission has to bring it before the Council. Right. That's it. Right. I think, I think we've taken cues from... I mean, the Planning Commission, I think, staff have taken cues from cases in the BZA's history, but um, I know that... the. Planning Commission kind of has the purview with council over the zoning ordinance and then regulatory ordinances um, go to an ordinance review committee, but they don't typically look at um, zoning amendments. It just seems unusual considering that BZA is charged with interpreting the ordinances and, and applying and enforcing them, mm -hmm. that BZA would have no involvement in um, considering proposed language to change or amend the ordinances. 
Yeah, it seems like uh, uh, BZA may be able to identify through experience areas where uh, uh, enforcement may be more difficult or easier if there are small tweaks in language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we've just kind of leaned on the uh, liaison typically, yeah. but um, it's something we can reevaluate um, if we want to kind of move forward. I know you haven't always been the liaison, <laughs> so I don't no, know. How, and and yeah. you know what? And that's interesting because yeah. really we were separate entities. Right. And we would get these things all of a sudden that said, oh, this is the new ordinance, and we're like, it is? Yeah. Okay. We have to enforce it now. Right. We didn't know what the background on it either. Sure. So. Yeah, I just think it may be worthwhile to, at, at the very least, have a, a proposed ordinance language just pass through uh, uh, the BZA for review and comment. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other... Uh, any other uh, business communications announcements? Anything else? I really liked having those classes. Great, mm -hmm. okay. great. Those were helpful. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, good. We don't really have another one scheduled, but if there's certain, okay. I mean, I, everyone I think shared at least a few co like topics of interest. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's a, anything else that comes to mind, let me know, and we can see if Matt. I mean, Matt even offered to do some custom tr training if there's a topic that they haven't done recently. So. Right. With nothing else left on the agenda, we'll uh, close the meeting at 7:37 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yep, we're good. Thanks. I'm glad I wasn't late. I was nervous. That's why I texted you. I'm like.